Sound check. One, two, three, four. Hey guys, Brandon Peacock here with Altera Arms. Um, I am the val rifle validation specialist here at Altera. I get to shoot every single rifle that goes out the door, ensuring that it shoots accurately. Um, I do ballistics trajectory validation, I load ammunition, as well as I get to shoot all kinds of factory ammo. Something that I've noticed and um, we wanted to go over as maybe some of you consumers might not know the importance of this is from one lot to the next lot you can have wide velocity variations point of impact variations and we're going to go over some of the reasons why that might be we have um, some 7 prc hornady precision hunter <clears throat> and this is uh, one lot of ammo we pulled the bullet and poured the powder out to see what we might find as far as charge weight and maybe potentially the powder. Well, when we pull this out, we can tell that it is, we weighed it, it is 65.9 grains. And when we look at it, it looks to be some kind of reloader uh, powder. The reason I believe it is reloader 26 is we reference the Hornady published data, reloading data. And the only one that correlates super well with this charge weight and the velocity is Reloader 26. So one way we can tell is visually it looks identical. Usually each manufacturer kind of has a, a distinct look. Um, for example, this Stayball HD is a spherical ball powder with some little disc looking flakes to it. H1000, the hydrogen powders usually have a certain color to them. Um, again, the reason we know it's H1000 is visually, as well as the charge weight correlating to the velocity and Hornady's published data. So this um, is what we believe to be the case. These could be some kind of proprietary powder that they get from Hodgkin Reloader or whatever. That's kind of besides the point. What we really want to focus in on is each lot is different. Each lot has a different velocity. Each lot has a different point of impact. And we want to go over that so you know and know what the effects can be at distance um, and that you can adjust for and know exactly what to do to uh, make your rifle shoot how it should uh, from one lot to the other and that you're on at distance when you go out into the field. The main point we're getting at with this video is you can't just take lot A, sight in your rifle, and consider it good going out in the field after you've bought a different lot of ammo later in the year, and that's the lot you're actually taking hunting. So when you buy a lot of ammo, you have to zero it, collect velocity, update that in your Ford off app. If you buy a different, say you run out of ammo in the summertime, you shot at a bunch of rocks or steel, you have to go get another box to go shoot some deer or elk or whatever you're hunting, you have to do the exact same process. Zero your rifle, float the turret, set it, update your velocity in the Ford Off app or whatever app you might be using, then you will be good to go. But you can't just set it and forget it, do, do it once and think you're good forever because it's technically the same 7PRC Precision Hunter or whatever other ammunition it might be it's not a set it once and forget it and just keep buying that same ammo. It, it varies widely. We're going to go out to the range. We're going to shoot all these lots of ammo through one rifle, do a couple groups of each, kind of round robin style. We'll come back after we've collected that information of point of impact, accuracy, velocity. We're going to break all that down, show you some numbers and the effects that it can have downrange. Hey guys, we made it out here to the range, got all set up. <clears throat> we've got our different lots of ammo, three different lots of ammo that we talked about earlier. We've got our rifle set up, we put a scope on here. We got to zero the scope. So we're going to zero the scope and uh, foul the barrel as we do that. Then we're going to leave the zero the same, shoot our three different lots and we'll evaluate the velocity differences. We'll do a couple groups of each and we're going to run them in round robin, letting the rifle cool and everything like that. Um, and then we'll also evaluate the point of impact difference uh, between the three different lots. So here we go. We're going to get started, put our ears on and 
get the lab radar set up and then we'll uh, get back to you here in a minute. Don't have any uh, 450 Marlin. 450 Marlin. <laughs> Actually, I got that right here. <laughs> Pretty good group, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to walk down here. We've got two targets, uh, two groups for each lot of ammo. Uh, the lot that has stay ball, the lot that we believe to be Reloader 26, and the lot that we believe to be H1000. Um, not that any of that really matters a ton other than velocity, um, point of impact differences. They all really shoot pretty well. But here we have the target. So here we have, uh, this is the lot. We believe it to be H1000. First group. One, two, and then that was my third shot. Again, it is a little bit windy out here and good bit of mirage. This is their second group. And then <clears throat> down here we have our Reloader 26 lot. Um, first group. Second group, that's two and one right there. So two shots and then third. And then all the way down here at the bottom, we have our last um, lot of ammo with what we believe to be Winchester Stable HD. This is the first two shots, third shot. And then these, I'm not 100% sure which one is which. We've uh, done our little test. Still got a little bit more to do, but for now, we have a couple groups on target of the couple different lots. We're gonna pull these targets, take them back to the shop where it's not so bright and windy, get some better audio. We'll evaluate them, kind of go over some of the statistics that we found. And uh, so we'll get back with you here in a minute when we take these targets down and we'll see you in the shop. All right, so we've returned from the range, gathered some data, also our targets. Let's go over these targets. First, we're gonna start with the Reloader 26 lot of ammo. Notice our group size on each one. And my point of aim on these is the bottom of this little diamond here. That's where I'm actually aiming. So this one you can see is maybe uh, just a, a quarter high or so. Um, our average for this lot of ammo was 29.44. Our high velocity was 29.58 feet per second. Our low velocity was 2914 feet per second, which gives us an extreme spread of 44. So next up, we have our lot of ammo that we believe to be Winchester Stable HD. Again, aiming at the same point of aim down there at the bottom center diamond. Notice our group size, two in this hole, one up a little bit, a uh, little clover leaf, but down in, uh, off to the right a little bit. Our average velocity on this one was 29.06. Our high was 29.67. And our low was 28.80 feet per second. So that gives us an extreme spread of 87 out of this lot of ammo. Might be part of the reason why the groups look like they do and the location is. Our final target here is the lot of ammo with H1000. Same point of aim, so we're running about three quarters MOA or an inch since it's about a hundred, it's at a hundred yards, about three quarters of an inch low with this lot of ammo. On this target, our average velocity 2846, our high velocity was 2874, and our low velocity was 2816, again, feet per second, which gives us an extreme spread of 58. And again, kind of look at the uh, group size, velocity, extreme spread, maybe make some correlations there with how the group, group looks and those velocities. 
Now that we've looked at the results at 100 yards for these lots of ammo individually, let's combine all this inf information together um, and show you what it means for you out in the field if you don't go through the process of re-zeroing and regathering a velocity. So as you can see, this lot of ammo versus this lot of ammo, maybe I can hold them like that, one, again, my point of aim is on that small lower part of the diamond. This one is a little bit high. This one's a little bit low. There's about an inch difference between the two. So say you go to the store, get this lot of ammo, which actually shot the highest and was the fastest lot of ammo. And then you run out of ammo right before hunting season or maybe a shooting competition or whatever, but you have to go buy another lot of ammo. And that other lot of ammo happens to be the slowest lot of ammo, as well as the lowest point of impact on target. So if you don't go through the process of re-zeroing and gathering uh, updated velocity out of your rifle, we're gonna go through what kind of impact that can have downrange. So here we have all the numbers crunched. You could probably pause the video and take a look at this if you'd like, but, <clears throat> At 500 yards, if that was the case, you went from the highest point of impact, fastest velocity, to lowest point of impact, slowest velocity, that would be one and a half minutes or 5.5 inches at 500 yards. That's how far you would be off. However, let's say at that distance, 500 yards, you happen to grab the fastest round out of the fastest, highest imp impact lot, and then you grab the slowest round out of that other lot, you would be 10 inches off at 500 yards. That's a significant difference. And that's just starting out baseline. And it doesn't, uh, that doesn't factor in environmentals, how far off you are on your range. That's just instant 10 inches is how far you might be off. So let's move this out a little bit further. Say fastest lot zeroed, and your velocity, that's what your rifle is set up for. And you happen to be shooting the slowest lot, lowest impact, lowest uh, point of impact. At 750 yards, that would be 2.25 MOA or 15.75 inches. Big difference. And then let's go to the same scenario, but let's take that out even further to 1,000 yards. You would be off three minutes or 30 inches you're pretty much missing your entire target unless it's larger than that. And again, this is just starting out. You're just off 30 inches, not factoring in anything else, your trigger squeeze, nothing. So let's go worst case scenario, absolute worst case scenario. Fastest uh, round out of the fastest lot versus the slowest round out of the slowest lot, considering the point of impact as well. Um, that's absolute worst case scenario. So you'd be off 10 inches at 500 yards, 22 and a half inches at 750 and 37 and a half inches at a thousand yards. So this kind of illustrates the importance of making sure you do your part in zeroing your rifle and gathering a, uh, velocity, a velocity average for a certain lot of ammo. And when you switch or go buy another lot of ammo, you know exactly what you have to do to your rifle. Go re-zero it, gather a new velocity, update that in whatever app you're using. We here at Altera, we use uh, the Hornady Ford Off app. So make sure you update that in there and then plug and play. You're pretty much ready to go. Goodness gracious. <laughs> so, sh so now... <laughs> now <laughs> so should I just go right in? I, I guess I'm confused as to where we're at. So we hope this is valuable to you, kind of opens your eyes as to the importance of rechecking that zero when you change ammo and rechecking your velocity average when you change ammo. So if uh, this was helpful for you, great. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. We also have linked a few pieces of information, um, the Hornady load data for the 7PRC, which is kind of what we referenced to get these powders. Um, again, hopefully you enjoyed this and, uh, <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Hopefully you enjoyed this cut. <laughs>